So what if I told you there is one thing you can do, one thing, that will enhance your well-being, improve your relationships, advance your career, and make your wildest dream come true. This is the advice that I give to the people I manage and the people I mentor. The problem is, it's so simple and so basic, I'm almost embarrassed to say it. But then I wouldn't have a talk and I'd have to leave the stage, so, so here it goes. Ask for what you want. Now the reason this is so important to me is because I failed to heed this advice. It was advice that I was given by my mentor many years ago. Here's what happened. My dad died seven years ago. My mom has dementia. And her dementia had advanced to a point where she could no longer live alone. So the decision was made that my mom would move in with me and my husband, Jim. If any of you have ever cared for an aging parent or grandparent, you know this is brutal work. It is hard, it's emotionally exhausting, and it is all-consuming. After four years, I kind of hit a window. I was like, wow, I can't do this anymore. I don't know me anymore. I need to do something. And I came up with this harebrained idea that I was going to go to Harvard for a week, this program called Women in Power. I felt like, wow, if I could just be around dynamic women from all over the world, it will help me. Oh my God, I was right. <laughs> it was the most amazing experience, but also at the same time, a light bulb went off for me. I realized that I had let my personal network shrink to almost nothing, nothing. I was so busy being the helper that I forgot to ask for help. So when the program was over, <laughs> I did something I wouldn't have done the week before. My mom was staying with my sister the week I was at Harvard. I called my sister and said, hey, guess what? I need to keep mom for six months because I need a break. That went over really well. <laughs> but my mom's still with her, so it's okay. <laughs> I realized the power of, for asking for what I wanted, and I'm hoping that I can help you do the same. So <laughs> that was me. Yeah, that was me. So how do we get there? <laughs> okay? Well, here's some ways we can do that. So my husband Jim is here, and I don't mean to embarrass him. I warned him he was in this. A year ago, he said, I'm going to lose weight. And he started drinking these protein shakes every day. The weight dropped off. I found about five pounds of it, bless him. But it was great. He looks hot. And I'm not just saying that because he's here. He does. But he developed this annoying as hell habit. <laughs> <laughs> Leaving the dirty blender in the sink. 
every day. And who cleaned it up? Me. You know why? Because it was easier to clean it than it was to ask him to do it. Now, to his credit, I had a little talk with Jim a um, couple of weeks ago and kind of said, hey, honey, do you think you could clean up after yourself? And you know what he said? Why didn't you ask me? Now I come downstairs to this. <laughs> this might sound trivial like a trivial kind of story, like, oh, it's the blender. But there's a reason for sharing this. If you can't ask the person you love for something small, something simple, if you can't ask for the small things, then how the hell are you gonna ask for the big things? How are you going to change your life? How are you going to get that raise? How are you going to get that promotion? How are you going to get the job you want if you can't ask for the simple things? Whoop. That comes in a moment. That's good stuff. So I want to ask you, show of hands. How many of you think you deserve a raise? you okay yeah how many of you have actually asked keep your hands raised how did that turn out for you okay not good but we can get there still don't let that discourage you the fact is people do want to say yes but you have to be prepared when you go ask for that raise you, women do this all the time they knock on the boss's door and say um, can I talk to you about something? Hell no. Be prepared. <laughs> make your case. Make an appointment. Ask for more than what you want because I'm going to tell you something. Nobody has ever said to me my entire life, oh, Marian, you didn't ask for enough money. I'm going to give you more. You didn't ask for enough time off. Here, have another week. Ask for more than what you want. So I'm on city council. I think you all know that. I think some of you expected me to talk about city council business. I had to mention a little bit. These are my colleagues. How would you like to ask them for what you want? <laughs> I'm going to tell you how not to ask them for what they want. We have Boy Scout troops that come in for every council meeting. It's part of their civic engagement. I knew the scoutmaster this one time and his son. They sat through this particularly boring meeting. I went to the back and apologized and I said, I wish you were here to see something exciting. The scoutmaster said, oh, oh no, we learned a lot. I asked his son, what did you learn? He said, we learned when you want something to ask nice. Three people came to the council that day asking for something. Two of the women said, we worked with the staff. They were wonderful. Thank you for your service. Could you please give us an extension? We'll get the work done on our house, blah, blah, blah. Extension granted. We wanted to say yes. Third guy comes up. He trashed the staff, he cussed us out, and he was belligerent. Boom. <laughs> Demolition notice delivered. <laughs> Even 10 and 12-year-old kids could figure out when you want something, you ask nice. You say please, you say thank you. You show appreciation. And flattery isn't too bad either. You know, but you got to be sincere about it. It just can't be any old flattery. It's got to be things you might actually mean. <laughs> the 
there's also another way to get what you want. It's what I call the collective ask. Because sometimes things are too big for just one person. This is what we did with Innovate Raleigh. We gathered 175 people together five years ago. We tried to look at ways we could improve our community. There were three things that were at the top of our list. We wanted a direct flight from Raleigh to San Francisco. Little did we know that the airport was negotiating with an um, airline. But when that article came out in the front page of the paper the next day, with all these companies and all these people saying, number one priority for our region, it helped push it over the edge. It happened. We also wanted to make sure that we had an entrepreneurial hub for our folks. HQ Raleigh was born. And we wanted to make sure that we, as a group, could put Raleigh on the map for entrepreneurship and innovation. So we executed a plan. Everybody had a piece of it. All of a sudden, we started getting national recognition in magazines and newspapers throughout the country for this community of entrepreneurs we had helped catalyze. The collective ask also works with city council. You might remember something about outdoor dining. Um, food trucks, but it works. The collective voice is the most powerful of all. Because remember this, people want to say yes. So here's my good friend, Justin Miller. Wet picks, taco fan, taco man. He comes to city council and says, I want to buy this old horse barn and put a taco stand in it. Okay, I've been on council for 10 years, and nobody has had the nerve to come and ask to buy any property. This can happen now. You know why? Because he asked. And then we have people like Matt Tomasulo, who didn't bother to ask. He just went out and did it. <laughs> he put up signs all over Raleigh telling people it's a 10-minute walk to the museum. It's a seven-minute walk here. He wanted to create a more walkable community. Great idea. The BBC came here and interviewed him. Raleigh and Matt Tomasulo were all over the news all over the world. How cool is that for us? The problem is the signs were illegal. <laughs> so we had to make sure that these signs came down. And we did it this way. We, cre we said, we want to say yes to Matt. Matt's cool. This is a great idea. So we created a pilot program. Whenever you hear pilot program, that's our way of working, city council's way of working around a problem and making it happen despite that. So we created a pilot program. Matt Signs ended up in cities throughout the world. Cool story. Bat Kid. <laughs> this little boy, make a wish child, San Francisco. He wanted to be Bat Kid for a day. 20 thousand people, yes, 20,000 people came out to make sure his day was successful. 20,000 people said yes to Bat Kid. He got to run with a Cape Crusader. He got to ride in the Batmobile, fight the Joker. The police chief was in on it, the mayor. How exciting to make this little boy's wish and dream come true. He asked, he got it. There's also an entrepreneur, Yang Yang, who, by the way, thought he had the greatest idea ever. He obviously didn't because he didn't get the grant money he was hoping to get. Sent him into this huge depression. And he decided to do 100 days of rejection therapy. 
So he was going to go out and ask for something every single day. I read the list of things he asked for. <laughs> I can barely control myself thinking about it. But he asked for a woman in a donut shop to make him donuts in the shape of the Olympic rings. And they all had to be colored as the Olympic rings were colored. He dressed up in a soccer suit, soccer ball, knocked on this guy's doors and said, can I come play soccer in your backyard? <laughs> <laughs> He walked up to a police officer and said, hey, can I drive your car? <laughs> the best, though, he went to this small air, air, like, air hangar and asked this guy if he could drive his plane. <laughs> Not only did the woman with the donuts make this for him, when he said, where can I pay for this? She said, oh, it's okay, it's on me. <laughs> Despite the fact that you didn't get a raise, I hope that most of you feel that there is an opportunity, that people do want to say yes. I already know your answer. When you leave here today, what are you gonna ask for? I know, I put you on the spot. You have one second to answer. Uh, what am I going to ask for? I'm coming back to you. Yeah. Ma'am, what are you going to ask for? Her mom to keep the kids tomorrow. Amen. You deserve that day off. <laughs> you have an answer? I do. I'm going to a music festival and I want it to not rain. She wants it not to rain when she goes to the music <laughs> festival. Oh, I can make that happen. No problem. <laughs> because this is my TED Talk, I get to make an ask of all of you now. I'm going to ask, I'm putting on a city council hat right now. I'm going to ask all of you to please vote because I believe that that is the way, the most effective way, that you can get what you want. It's the most effective way to build your community. I'm also going to ask you to consider running for office because we need good people who are energized and want to build their community. We need people with new ideas. We need people who are passionate. If you are interested, and if you need advice, just ask me. I'll say yes. Thank you.